I'm Gregory Brill, and this is my airplane, the Hotajet 420, the HA420 with the APMG upgrade. That is a bigger stabilizer for uh, shorter field takeoffs and landings, and the APMG also gives me a bunch of other bells and whistles. This is actually a really new airplane. Um, it was only certified, I want to say, in 2017. It's a Japanese airplane. It's Honda. They don't just do cars. It was certified in 2017, I think. You might fact check me on that. Um, but it's been in development since the 80s. Apparently, a very senior guy at Honda really wanted to do an aircraft. And this is that result. So this is like somebody's real passion for aviation. And for me, it was one of the things that attracted me to the airplane because it, uh, it really, everything about it is clearly what somebody wanted it to be as an airplane, as opposed to what they already had to work with, or a fuselage that they wanted to make use in a different way. There is no predecessor to this aircraft. This is the aircraft that was certified. This is the one I'm flying with some improvements. Um, it just has amazing specifications. Um, and it's also the most reasonably priced twin engine turbine jet, in my opinion, you could possibly get. And at the same time, the most advanced avionics wise, Things like that, which is really important to safety. Anyway, we'll find out more about that as things go on. But my story is this. So in my previous life, I was one of those tech guys. Uh, and I want to apologize to everybody for what technology's done. I'm really glad to have left that life. And now I have the benefit and the opportunity to really engage my passion, which is flying. But how I got there was, I didn't know I even wanted to do it. But uh, when I left my previous life, I went crazy. Uh, I had an enormous amount of energy, I just, I, I, but I need an energy sink, I need a place to put it, otherwise it chews on me. So I got into aviation, I said I'm going to be the best pilot I can be, and I'm going to work my way up to a, you know, to a jet aircraft, just because it seems fascinating, and I think it's a freedom, right? Like, what's really interesting about the United States is that, like, freedom to fly is kind of a right, I don't think a lot of people understand they also have. Right. Um, and I won't get into it, but when I discovered that I have the right to just get up in the air and, and go wherever I wanted, that was incredible. So I was going to make the most of it. So I hunkered down and full time I've been flying for about four or five years now. It's all I've been doing through a series of different airplanes. Um, and I, you know, right now I'm a, uh, I'm a commercial multi-engine, IFR, all of that. I'm about to go for my ATP and I'm a second in command type rated for this jet. Soon I'll be piloting command type rated for this jet. And that really begins the first arc of my journey. That completes the first arc, but I have so much more I really want to do. If you're thinking about getting into this, I can tell you there's a million ways to do it, and it will open doors in life that you just didn't know were there. Before I left my old technology life, I had a pretty substantial um, you know, technology company. We were in a few different countries. And um, I had a lot of employees. They were software developers predominantly, software people. And um, you know their income was such that as their hobby, a lot of them, I should say a lot of them, but a number of them liked to fly. So they would come into the office with headsets and uh, you know all kinds of things. And they'd be like, oh my God, you should totally get into this. And I was like, at the time, I was like, I don't, why? Somebody could fly me, why would I want to do this? I'm like, well, you don't understand. Maybe one day you will. And so I watched a lot of these guys who worked for me, you know, they went through their private and they, they worked their way up and they were flying airplanes on the weekends and stuff like that. And I just kind of watched it from a distance, right? Um, they were able to work it into their life, right? Because realistically, although they were in a pretty good situation financially, truth is it really doesn't cost that much if it's something you really want to do. It's a lot less than college, you know, not to say anything about university or college, but it's probably one-fifth the cost, or one-tenth the cost. You could be a certified commercial pilot, right? And have an instant living and a beautiful life. Like, not saying choose one, but put it in perspective. I'm so anyway, these guys, they always, um, they were flying. And then when I exited the business, I thought, of, I thought about them. I thought about how happy they were, and how they were like really, you know, they're really enjoying it. Um, and uh, I said, well, I gotta do something. So I originally hooked up with, uh, and hey, you can do a camera shot of him, that's Pete over there. But I hooked up with a company called P6 Aviation, and uh, they were near me, but um, I got referred to them because when I talked to people, they're like, well, for somebody like you, who's gonna do it full time and like just go balls to the wall, you really need to do your stuff like more situationally. For example, when I did my IFR, I literally flew across the country and back with my instructor because I wanted to see how or I should say they wanted me to see how uh, things change. Like different controllers handle you different way. If you take out from Los Angeles, you're gonna be VOR even though it's 2021, right? Like, you know, if you don't go and see that, you're not gonna see it. 
I'll tell you, here's an experience. Try meeting your departure um, in an SR20 normally aspirated engine and feel what it's like to climb out of a of a canyon and not be able to meet your your stuff. That will teach you the difference between turbocharged and normally aspirated right. in a way that nothing else will. So that was the whole thing, it was experiential training. So I did that. I just came away, you know, not just having certificates, but also having the wisdom that kind of comes with it. Um, and I really recommend that kind of training. You'll probably see Pete later if Mike puts them on. But uh, yeah, that's that's how I got into it. I also fly a lot. So um, I, I haven't been on a commercial airplane since 20, 17. I, I, I swear to you, I'll never yes. will. I never will again. Like never again. You and me do not deserve to be treated like that. You just don't. And when you actually learn about flying, you learn actually about the economics, right? Of their economics and of flying it yourself. You realize, geez, it is actually possible to do the trips you want to do and not be paying that much more, but do it in like your own airplane. And I know that sounds like something only certain people could do, but you'd be really surprised, in particular if you invest in a safe kit, right? If you invest in a safe kit and you got the right people around you, you're in an incredible airplane that will take you anywhere for like the same price as an airline. I know it sounds crazy, but you'd have to be the pilot for that to work out.